Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gessler and in this video we're going to talk about reflection. Now I have started off with a partially filled out paper here to make things go a little faster. So feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast for you. Alright, so when we talk about reflection, we're talking about something in particular happening and that is when light bounces off of a surface. Any kind of surface, opaque, clear, uh, transparent, it doesn't matter. If their light is bouncing, that's reflection. Now there's this fancy law of reflection that doesn't have a pretty name. And it says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of <clears throat> reflection. And we found this out by doing that lab, the law of reflection, where we measured the angles and it turns out they were the same. Um, so we're gonna write here what these things mean and I've got a picture here. So we've got angle of incidence and angle of reflection. First off, we use theta, that Greek letter theta with a little subscript I for incidence. And we use theta with a little subscript R for reflection. And when we talk about the angle of incidence, we're talking about the incoming ray and we have to measure it from the normal. Now uh, this right here is the normal. That's a line that is perpendicular to the surface. To surface. Okay. So when I draw my incoming ray and it hits right there, then my angle of incidence is measured right there. Okay. Now the angle of reflection is the outgoing ray and it is also measured from the normal. And so when I draw it on here, it's going out. And if I'm perfect, that one is the same, which looks pretty close. Okay, so there's my angle of incidence and my angle of reflection. Now this right here is called a plane mirror. And plane mirror is code for a flat mirror. Uh, because it's a plane, like a plane in math class. Okay. Um, plane mirrors, <clears throat> when they make images, they make, uh, put a little dot here, they make uh, virtual images that are upright, flipped right to left. That's why when your, your image follows you like in a mirror, that's what we mean by flipped right to left. Um, and they are the same size. So they're not magnified or reduced. Um, upright, flipped right to left, same size, virtual images. Okay, so that's all I wanted to write in that sentence. Um, but I do want to talk about what's, what's the difference between real and virtual. Um, a real image is one that you can project. Um, this is like a, <laughs> the smart board makes a real image. That projector up there makes a real image because I can shine it onto something. Um, it, but I can't do that with a plane mirror. Okay, real can be, whoops, projected. Virtual can't. You can see a virtual image, but you can't get it to, to be on a piece of paper. Um, we played with the mirror where we made an image on something, and um, that is a real image. If you can find the image and project it on a piece of paper, then it is a real image. So plane mirrors never make real images because they can't. Um, they don't, uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, but a spherical mirror can. And so we're going to talk about what a spherical mirror is. That is one that is curved. And when we talk about our spherical mirrors, they follow the uh, law of conservation. I'm sorry, they, they follow the law of reflection. But there's a lot of different normals. Uh, lots of normals. And we'll draw some pictures here in just a minute. Okay, so we've got our spherical mirrors. Um, just with lots of different normal lines. So there's two kinds of mirrors here, um, and I've drawn, I've drawn them, they look kind of like eyelashes here, but this one is a concave mirror. And a concave, whoops, mirror is known as a converging mirror, and I'm gonna draw a little bit of a picture here, uh, not to scale. So I'm gonna have a bunch of normal lines I'm gonna draw with my pencil here. So right here, that normal will go this way, and here the normal goes this way, and here it goes towards the middle, and here my normal is different. You see my different normals? 
So this reflected ray is going to go this way, and this one's going to go this way, and this one's going to go that way, and this one's going to go in, and they're all coming together. That's why we call it a converging mirror, converging mirror. And that is because the light comes together. Okay. A converging mirror can form an image because the light is coming together. We'll talk about those images in a, in a little bit. This other one, oh, oh, that's funny. I put the lines on the wrong side. So let's pretend it looks like this. It's a nice thick mirror. There you go. Okay. So on this one, the rays coming in, this one is a convex mirror. When I draw my little normal lines here, you can see my normals kind of point outward instead of in, kind of like eyelashes. So this light goes that way, and this light goes that way. That one goes out. You see those lights are going apart. So this one is called a diverging mirror, and that is because the light spreads out. Okay? Converging, diverging, concave, convex. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about images, which we'll do a little bit more, um, in the next video, we'll talk about how to make those images, but we've got some attributes that we talk about. So um, depending on the location of the object, okay, depending on the location of the object, the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, depending on the location of the object, the image could be uh, upright or inverted, that refers to if it's upside down or right side up, right? Okay, it could be magnified or reduced, but there's not really a good way to, to know. Well, there is a good way to know, but we'll talk about that later. And it could be, uh, whoops, real or virtual with a concave mirror. I wrote that on this side of the line because that goes with concave mirror. Okay, when it's a diverging mirror, when it's a diverging mirror, these are, these images are always upright, they're always virtual, and they're always reduced. Okay, for a convex mirror, the images are always upright, virtual, and reduced. You can't have anything else. Now you can see virtual images with your eyes, but you can't project them on a screen, okay? So one last thing I need to tell you is that this point where light converges here, I'm gonna draw a little arrow at it, this is called the focal point. And it looks like there's not a focal point over here, but if these rays can be traced through the mirror, they would meet up at a spot over here. And so a convex mirror has a focal point also. It is just behind the mirror. That's part of why we can't, um, we can't project that because you can't put a screen over here and then have the light go there because it can't go through the mirror, okay? So the focal point is almost a virtual focal point, okay? So uh, in the next video, you're gonna watch, uh, you're gonna learn about the mirror equation and it's good to know that there's a focal point there and then we'll talk about some other things in that video. Thanks for watching.